So we're talking about Newton's three laws, um, and I really have them here more in, in, in concise equation form. And I really, when I talked about Newton's um, third law last time, I didn't really put it in equation form. And we are going to talk about each of these um, individually, but just for my OCD-ness, uh, I just write down for completeness that really what Newton's third law means is that if body A exerts a force on body B, then body B exerts a force back on body A, equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. That's what that vector equation right there means. So that's the equation form of Newton's third law. We'll get back to that later. I guess I should say, those are the two forces in a third law pair. It's if you exert a force on something else, that something else must exert a force back on you. It must. Um, not only must it, but it must be the same magnitude, and it's going to point in the opposite direction because it's back on you. Um, but that's uh, the third law pair for Newton's third law. We'll get back to that. So in order to talk about Newton's laws, of course, we're talking about forces. We never defined a force. What is a force? Okay, you should define it. Whoops, you should define it for yourself. Um, but a force, or you should try, and then you should take the actual definition. A force is really just a push or a pull. A push or a pull. Um, there's really no better way to define it than that. A force is a vector. It's got magnitude and direction. You can push or pull with a certain magnitude in a certain direction. Most forces are exerted by contact. If you put your hands on an object to push it to you or to pull it or to lift it up or to pick it up, you're exerting a force on it. Um, but forces can be exerted through not co through contact um, and there's certain forces that uh, work that way uh, actually <laughs> in reality all forces sort of work that way but um, gravity gravity is an, is an example of a force that acts not through contact right so if you've got the earth here and you've got an object above the surface of the earth we know that there's a gravitational force gravitational force oops gravitational F subgravitation uh, on that object. And so that acts through a distance. So forces can act through a distance. Um, but in, in the case, in, uh, for us, just to, in order for us to identify the forces on a body, it's always going to be looking at what touches the body, right? That they're typically forces are exerted through touch, what touches the body. Um, and then we add gravity, right? Gravity can be exerted whether the, the earth is touching it or not. And then Newton's first law doesn't talk about force, but talks about net force, right? What do we mean by net force? Oh, wait, sorry. Let me go back. Um, a force we designate as F vector in general, any force. Um, if we have multiple forces, we might have F1, F2, dot, 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 right? A bunch of forces on a body, um, sometimes, or just F sub I is some arbitrary force on a body. Um, the units of force, the units of force, uh, notice that Newton's second law actually tells us that force is mass times acceleration, so the units of force must be kilogram, oop, I always, this is an important, uh, well, not, this is a very small point, not a very important point, um, this is not a minus sign, that's just a dash to separate two units, uh, let me finish writing this, kilogram meters per second squared, that's not kilogram minus meters per second squared. That's a, a dash to separate the kilograms from the meters per second squared. Really, um, I should just be careful and say that the units of force are kilograms times meters per second squared because it's a mass times an acceleration. And that is known as the Newton. The new, whoops, the MKS unit of force is the Newton, also abbreviated as capital N. Okay, so the units of force... Um, let's see, it's got magnitude and direction. What else? A net force. A net force is just the sum of all the forces on a body. Sum of all the forces on a body or a system of bodies. It, 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 at first, we'll just talk about a single body, and the net force would be the sum of all the forces on the body, which is written as the sum of all the F sub I's. 
right? F1 plus F2 plus F3, F1 plus F2 plus F3, right? F gravity plus F friction plus F normal, whatever. It's um, the sum of all the forces on the body. So notice, this is really important. If the net force is zero, what can you say about the individual forces on the body? You can't say much. All, well, what it says about the, it says that the sum of all the forces is equal to zero, but it doesn't say that there is no force on the body, right? It doesn't mean no forces are on the body. As a matter of fact, is there a situation that you can think of where no forces would be exerted on a body? Think about it. Think about your phone sitting on the table. It's not moving anywhere. What can you say about the net force on your phone? Well, the net force is zero, right? It's not moving. It's not accelerating. It doesn't matter if it's not moving. It's not accelerating. If it's moving, it still might have a net force of zero. Um, but it's not accelerating. So the net force is zero. Does that mean there are no forces on it? Are there any forces on your phone sitting on the table? Yes, there are forces on your phone sitting on the table. The, it is in contact with the table, so the table is exerting an upward force on your phone. That's called the normal force. The normal force is due to the contact with the table. Gravitate, we're, we're on Earth, so there's a gravitational force pulling it down. So there's at least those two forces. If the phone has a tendency to want to move sideways on the table, let's say the table is a little bit tilted, which it probably is, then there's got to be a frictional force on the phone keeping it from sliding down the table. Right? Imagine a frictionless table. You put your phone on and your phone's not going to sit still. So there are definitely forces on all bodies. Can you think of a situation where there would be no forces on a body? The, the hardest thing is, is to get away from gravity, right? So, so gravity, of course, you don't know the specifics of gravity necessarily, but you go into outer space, you say, okay, let me throw something into, you know, throw something in the air. Is there, is there force on it? Yeah, there's air resistance. There's gravitational force. Then you go say, well, let's go into outer space. Let's throw something in outer space. And you say, okay, in outer space, there's no friction. There's no tables. Well, if we're you know, throwing a ball outside of our spaceship. Um, and so now we can start to reduce the forces, but you've still got the gravitational force of the Earth. You say, well, let me get far away from the Earth. Well, then you got the gravitational force of the Sun. Let me get far away from the Sun. Well, then you got the gravitational force of Alpha Centauri. And so it's impossible to actually get to a place where the net forces, well, I'm sorry, where, the, where there are no forces. Now, you can get to a place where maybe the gravitational forces are pretty small and maybe even negligible. That would be somewhere in, in deep, 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 deep space, way outside of our solar system. I don't know where that would be. Um, but you can probably get to places where the, forces, where, the, where, the, where the forces are pretty small and we can approximate there are no forces. But nowhere on Earth. On Earth, there's always forces exerted on bodies.